Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Parinas Barhan, Clinical Head at OSS Fertility, Sikandrabad. And today I'll be talking about the steps in an IVF procedure. Now when a patient is going IVF treatment, it's best to divide it into a couple of headings. Firstly, there is something called as the pre-treatment phase. The pre-treatment phase is followed by the stimulation phase, which in turn is followed by oocyte retrieval. And then we have the embryo transfer. Now, what is done in the pre-treatment phase is that the patient, the couple as such, a detailed history is done, the patient is examined, the husband's semen analysis is done, some basic investigations are done to determine the cause for infertility. Once the patient is decided to need to undergo an IVF procedure, the couple is told to come on day one of the wife's period. When the wife comes on day one, usually a transvaginal scan is done in order to rule out any pre-existing ovarian cysts and to check the endometrial thickness, also to see the number of eggs which are seen in both the ovaries. Based on the patient's age, her reserve, as well as her weight, a stimulation protocol and a dose of injections is decided for her. The patient is asked to come daily for injections, which are roughly given for about 10 to 12 days. In the stimulation phase, the patient will also be required to come for follicular monitoring. Follicular monitoring usually involves transvaginal ultrasound scans, which may need to be repeated every three days. In these scans, we usually look for the growth of the follicles. Ideally, every follicle should be growing at the rate of about 1.5 to 2 millimeters per day. Once the follicles, once most of the follicles are seen to achieve a size of somewhere in the range of 17 to 18 millimeters, that's when they are supposed to be ready for trigger. We give, we give something called as an ovulation trigger shot, which is usually an injection given at night. This injection is usually given subcutaneously and it helps in the maturation of the eggs. About 36 hours, that's almost one and a half day, after the ovulation trigger shot, the patient is posted for an oocyte retrieval procedure. Now this oocyte retrieval procedure is usually done under anesthesia. The patient is subjected to a short general anesthesia, which means she will be given medicines through her veins. There is no it's usually we don't give anesthesia through the spine. So a short general anesthesia is given to the patient and using a transvaginal approach where we put a probe through the vagina, using a needle, the eggs are retrieved. All this is done under ultrasound guidance. There is no surgery which is involving her abdomen. There are no cuts on the patient's abdomen. These eggs which are retrieved are then combined with the husband's sperm in the laboratory under this microscope which you see on, on my right. Now, usually the husband, we preferably use the semen sample which is given on the same day as the oocyte retrieval. But we usually encourage the couples to give a sample as a backup before which would be frozen and used in case of certain unforeseen events where the husband is not able to give a fresh sample on the same day. Suppose a husband needs to undergo a testicular sperm aspiration. Mostly he will be posted on the same day as the oocyte retrieval as his wife for the procedure again under anesthesia. Oocyte retrieval is usually done under anesthesia as a daycare procedure, which usually means the patient will be called to the uh, hospital, empty stomach, in the mornings and usually after a lapse of about three to four hours she will be ready for discharge the procedure per se usually takes somewhere between about 20 to 45 minutes depending on the number of eggs which are retrieved and the complexity of the case following the retrieval the eggs are fertilized the mature eggs are injected with the sperms by a procedure called as ICSI in the laboratory these eggs are then cultured in the lab from somewhere between three to five days until they turn into embryos. Most of the times nowadays we are resorting to frozen embryo transfer where the embryos will be transferred in the patient's body at a later stage where her uterine lining is considered to be ready for a transfer. This is usually done in the subsequent cycle. Now to get her lining ready this is done in a transfer cycle. The aim of the transfer cycle is that the patient's endometrial thickness should be around more than 8 millimeters and there should be good blood flow to the endometrium. 
Unlike the stimulation cycle where we are concentrating on only getting as many good quality eggs as possible, in the transfer cycle our whole focus is on the endometrium and the progesterone values. So once we feel that the lining is looking good, it is ready, we start the patient on progesterone injections. And usually in case of day 5 embryos which are frozen, after 5 days of injections, we transfer the patient with the embryo. Following a transfer 14 days later, patient is asked to undergo a urine pregnancy test and a blood test in order to confirm a pregnancy.